For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. On this day of Memorial Day, I want to thank all the men and women who are in the service, who have done their service in the armed forces of the United States of America. I want to thank you for your duty. Now imagine a preacher getting up with the Bible and thanking the servicemen for their years of service to this country. We ought to take a little time to think about those people that had put their lives on the line. It's not about barbecues. It's not about making money. It's about our servicemen. Tell you about a serviceman that I know that was born in this world. He was born to die. His birth was beyond any normal birth. His birth was brought to us by God the Holy Spirit into a woman that never had relationships to after her firstborn was born. A virgin birth of a soldier named Jesus Christ who was born to fight a fight to battle with Satan and death. No man that goes into the service and is called into war knows if that will be the last time on his planet life. No one knows that they get sent off to a war if they're going to come home. No one knows what kind of injuries they will get in a war. No one knows that when they come back home that they will be greeted with fanfare or, be, or treated with mockery and discontentness for their service. And yet there's one soldier on the field, the Lord Jesus Christ, that came and took on his duties, called of not America, but called upon God for the human race that he created. A human race that are enemies against God. For he that hath not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. But that's not really the enemy. The enemy that God faces is Satan, the devil. And the trickery that he played upon our grandparents, Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ate of that fruit, the battle was set. When man sinned against God, there were serious consequences. For the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. Whether you're in the services, or you're a civilian, you will die. And this great soldier, Jesus Christ, was born to die. On the battlefield. And yet this soldier to this day is scorned, rejected, and despised by men. Worse than our Vietnam soldiers coming home. How our Vietnam soldiers were treated by this country was a disgrace. They served their country and were spitted upon. We got homeless vets. We got vets that don't even get taken care of by Donald Trump and the President of our United States. Our country does not take care of our vets. 
And as one vet, the Lord Jesus Christ, you disdain and you reject Him. You have no cares for that soldier that fought the battle and won. When he was born, he was set forth to head to Calvary. When he enlisted in the military of God in the armor against Satan and hell, he knew the exact day, time, and hour when he would die on the battlefield. And that battlefield is marked by a cross. As many today mark a grave, a spot that someone has died by a cross. Why do you do that? You do it because in your heart you know that death, victory is by a cross. That life hope is upon the finished work of the cross. <clears throat> that battle that the Lord Jesus Christ fought was for freedom. I don't mean freedom to talk, freedom to do whatever you want to do. The battle that Jesus Christ won was the freedom over sin in your life. He that hath the Son shall be free, and he shall make you free indeed. Out of John. Freedom comes by the Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ can set you free from your sins. See, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There are none good. No, not one. And yet the wages of sin is death. Without that soldier, Jesus Christ, you will die. Without that soldier, Jesus Christ, without the Son, John 3.36 says, you will get the wrath of God, which is hell. For whosoever was not found in the last book of life was cast into the lake of fire which burneth forever. <clears throat> but thankful to one soldier called to duty and faithful to his duty. When God spoke to his son and the son said, I will redeem them. I will suffer and die and bleed for their souls. Father, I will be that Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Our soldier was a Lamb. A sacrifice of God the Father. And who would think to send a Lamb into battle with a roaring lion that seeketh to devour according to the Bible. As we have sent men and women into foreign lands and to people who only want to kill them. Believe, that's right. Believe. God has sent His Son into this world into a losing enemy called Satan. But the real losers are you that reject Jesus Christ. Because there is salvation in no other name, for there is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. This country can reject the veterans. And has rejected the veterans. And sorry, those veterans can't do nothing about it. They have no power to do anything over your rejection. I wish they weren't rejected, but they are. They are among the homeless here in Daytona Beach and probably every city in this country. 
And yet, if you reject one soldier of God's army, the Lord Jesus Christ, He will come about you with vengeance. You can't escape ignoring or rejecting the veteran Jesus Christ. Because He will cast you into hell. He will make you homeless outside without the gates of New Jerusalem into a place that burns forever. And glory to God is that some of our veterans are born again Bible believing Christians and they will enter the gates of New Jerusalem. Anybody who calls upon God to be saved will enter into those gates of New Jerusalem to be present with the Lord for all eternity. You that despise Jesus Christ and reject Jesus Christ, you will not be in His company. You will not be amongst His being and the eternal life. You will suffer You'll be in torment by a holy God that put His Son into a mission for our souls. That little baby that was born in the manger in Bethlehem. That baby grew up and became the man. Not a man, the man. A man that was through his 33 and a half years. No one could find any fault in that person. There was no guilt in Jesus Christ. Now I'm sorry to say with some of our service men and women, there's been guilt. There's been sin. And yet, on the other hand, some of them get more honor than you give Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ without sin, without spot, climbed Mount Calvary, laid His hands down and was nailed to that cross that you might get victory. That you may overcome death and hell by His work. Jesus Christ which holds the keys of death and hell today and the keys of David of the Jewish throne. Jesus Christ, a soldier of God's army. Holy and righteous. When you were not. What God wants from you is to believe on that soldier. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But if America has no respect for its military, you're going to have no respect to your God. I know some of you out there, oh, no war, peace, peace, no war, make love, not peace, not war. And yet God is the God of war. David has spoke often in the Psalms of God giving him the strength, God giving him the ability to conquer his enemies. When God told Israel, when you go in that land, you are to wipe out all those inhabitants and their sins. You see, God's not only angry at sin, but He also hates the sinner. And God hates you right now because you do not want to come out of your sin. You do not want to listen to a Bible preacher. You do not want to put any faith and trust in that soldier, Jesus Christ. You mock Him. 
The Bible says if you mock the feet of a preacher that is trying to do what God has told him to do to a lost and dying world, you don't realize that what you say about me, what you think about me, God takes personally. But that's not the point. The main outreach of what you're doing right now is rejecting that soldier, Jesus Christ. You are rejecting the gospel. And you will not win the battle or war of life. And life is one war with many battles, many victories, many battles. And if you take your last breath without the faith and belief on Jesus Christ, you have lost the war. What must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is the final end. That is the victory that overcometh. The victory over sin and death and Satan is Jesus Christ. And I don't mean as a cuss word. I mean as God, as Savior, as the Son of God, the Soldier of God, Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what happens when you believe on that Soldier, Jesus Christ. You enlist in an army. Revelation 19 says that the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, comes back with a sword in his hand. It is so funny how America is now taking those statues away of men on horses with a sword. That's going on today in America. Good morning. Good morning. I'm a very peace-loving person. And I just wanted to be sure to inform you that you're standing here shouting. I think I know that. Is so offensive that you're going to end up shutting down the entire farmer's market. And you're making Jesus the Lord. Read the back of the shirt, ladies. It says, cry aloud, lift up your voice, yeah, tell my people that they are iniquity. Hey, listen, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ read. seem like a really bad person. No, you're making him, because I'm you have sorry. not read your Bible. I'm the sorry. Bible says that Jesus preached to 5,000 people. That means he had to you're lift up. You're not preaching. You're shouting, and you're offensive, and you're violent. You're Please being offensive right now. Violent. What's wrong with what, what, what's, what's the I violence? Can't, I can't speak to you, but you can shout over a loudspeaker at people and offend them and ruin their lovely quiet, You're offending Jesus life. Christ right now because Jesus said go in all the world and preach the gospel. You're not preaching the gospel. You're shouting violence at people. You go to church? Does your sissy preacher get up there? How you guys doing without raising his voice? Raise up your voice. Shout. You'll be lucky if you stay alive, honey. You're really Oh, you threatening me? You, you, you lost your peace. You cannot be Christian. You just lost your peace, lady. You just threatened me. Because you will not believe on Jesus Christ. You want peace, and you will not get peace. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. That woman's a fool. I'm a Christian. I don't believe what you're doing. But that soldier, Jesus Christ, had a battle placed in front of him. That battle was Mount Calvary. That final part of the war. Of the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the end of the war. When Satan lost the war. When Jesus Christ entered into hell and deposited man's sins before he went over to Abraham's bosom, he spoke to the devils in hell and said, I'll take those keys. I'll take those keys of death and hell. They are mine. Thank you. And he went across that gulf. He went over to Abraham's bosom and said, I'm the Messiah. I'm the one you've been waiting for. Let's go, boys. And the Bible says that when he died, the graves opened up. 
when he died, the world watched and said, He's gone. He's dead. Hallelujah. Christ is dead. Three days later, the angel rolled that rock away and proclaimed, He is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah to me. Oh, woe to you who will not believe. There is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. Now, if I had an amplifier with that woman's favorite music, she would want me to crank it up. I am cranking up the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that Jesus saves. Words that need to be heard. Words that need to be into your ears that Jesus saves. On this Memorial Day, I do thank all those that have served in the military. And I lift up one special soldier that suffered and died and bled and arose from that grave to save my soul. Jesus Christ. America was a good, great nation by God, His Word, and Jesus Christ. That is no longer. The people on Capitol Hill does not want the Bible. The public schools do not want the Bible. The courtrooms do not want the Bible. You can't even pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And yet you'll proclaim, God bless America. You're foolish. So if this country will not stand up for the word of God and Jesus Christ. God has said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. God did not say they would all love and thank you for it. God said they'll be fools. They'll be mockers. They'll scorn you. God said, marvel not if the world hates you. Now, the world may hate you, but for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God loves you enough that He sent His Son that you may get eternal life. Eternal right is by Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, that's God, but by me. That is the word of Jesus. John 14, 6. And your churches are not going to preach this. Your school teachers will not do this. Your employer will not allow Jesus Christ on the workplace. And, and what God knew how this world would treat him, he has told those people that are saved, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Some of you may say, well, keep it in church. It ain't being preached in churches today. You might have a fat man in a red suit and an imaginary bunny bringing you jelly beans that is really his poop, but they will not bring you the gospel of Jesus Christ. You couldn't find this on the radio station, on the TV, but you'll hear it on a street corner at a farmer's market in Daytona Beach that God says, if you come to my son, I will save your soul. Be ye washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's kind of ironic that we are at a farmer's market. And yet, the original part of man's sin began in a garden with a mystery fruit. This is the best place to talk about sin. Because some kind of fruit that our grandparents, Adam and Eve, ate and made us sinners. I don't know if it was an apple. The Bible doesn't say. But because of that disobedience against God, we are sinners. We are born into sin. And the wages of sin is death. 
That's why you die. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Eve. The hospital that's up the road is because of that fruit in the garden. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Eve. The pain and suffering you're getting today. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Eve. But let's thank Jesus Christ because he went to Calvary's cross and died that he may take the sin out of your life. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Good. Can I take a picture, please? Sure. The same cause that caused the sin in the garden, Jesus Christ, the soldier of God, came and died on that cross. You know what happened after Adam and Eve in Genesis, the book of the Bible? I'll tell you what happened because it won't be taught in the public schools. When Adam and Eve sinned, God drove them out of that garden. And then they had two boys. One boy brought his fruit stand. He brought the fruits of the ground, potatoes, watermelons, green beans, anything that his hand could plant, he brought to God. The other boy brought a, what we would consume by scripture, a lamb. And he slain that lamb. And that lamb's blood spilt upon that altar. And God said, that lamb, Abel, I love it. Up Jesus, I prove that. Without blood, there is no sacrifice. There is no offering without blood. Cain, your V8 juice is not acceptable. Cain, I'm not going to take your fruit stand. Cain, I'm not going to take your fruit stand. It's not approved. And Abel was approved by the blood. He's got the joy, joy, joy down deep in his heart because God received his offering, the blood. Cain had a bad attitude. <coughs> Cain had a bad attitude towards God. <clears throat> bad attitude towards God. The fruit man had a bad attitude. And that fruit man, even God said, listen, Cain, I'm not quoting the Bible completely, but this is Genesis chapter 4. Come on, Cain. If you're to get right, if you're to do what you're supposed to do like your brother, you can have victory over sin. And the Bible says that there came a time that Cain and Abel were talking in the field. And Cain, the fruit man, the religionist, with his works, killed his brother Abel. And then he had the nerve to cry baby to God that all oh, his punishment is so unbearable. Yet he killed his brother. The fruit man killed a quarter of the population that afternoon. Because he did not bring the blood. Now you march from Cain and Abel over the centuries. About, about 33 AD, somewhere in there, we don't know. And the Bible speaks about Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That soldier, Jesus Christ, that was born in Bethlehem, of Mary, the virgin, until after her and Joe had sex and they had other children. That's in the Bible. Mary had other children by Joseph, but Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow.